Right golfers, you've got your irons completely wrong. <laughs> Joking aside, look, have you got the best irons in golf in your bag for your golf game? Lots of people still haven't. They're buying sets of irons, like so just one brand, one brand within a brand, set of irons. And I want you to start thinking about what blended sets mean more. I've got blended sets. I don't see many tour pros not having some form of blended set nowadays because more golfers are realizing that each iron does a specific job and often is hit from specific situations in general. And there's better solutions than just going one set of irons with a whole bag. Let's show you what I mean. So blended set, what is a blended set? I've got the Strixon range here. They make a blended kind of group of irons. Other manufacturers do as well. I just play Strixon and I, I actually blend some of these clubs, which is why I'm gonna show you these, but use whatever manufacturer you want. This starts down at a blade. So they start down at that true blade that everyone looks and desires and kind of wants. Then we move up to a ZX7 Mark II. This will have the feel, summy looks of the blade, but some help and cavity backing, which we'll come to why that is. ZX5, similar to seven, but a little bit stronger, a little bit more help. And then all the way up to ZX4 Mark II, which I game, which is a game improvement irons, but I don't game them through the whole set, because again, I blend. I make sure I've got clubs that do the job that's needed when I'm out playing, rather than just buying what is quite conveniently just a set of clubs. So when it comes to blending a set of clubs, you can pick from that brand anything within four of those different irons to make sure you've got the right iron for that key moment when you wanna score. So when it comes to the looks and the feels of blending irons, you are gonna see some differences, like the blade here, what you see, and feel, Obviously super responsive. We see slivers of top line, so much more slender and again, desirable when you look down at it. So you are gonna get challenged up at the top end, five iron, four end, four iron, like I wouldn't ever game this kind of club up here. But down at the bottom end, wedges, nine irons, maybe eight, subject to what you wanna do. That kind of look where lofts your friend, might be dialing right into how you see those approach shots. And as you would expect, it blends the seven to the five, literally next to nothing between those two, but they're both definitely a little bit thicker on that top line than the blade. Going up to the four, the one I gain, which I'm so accustomed to now, a little bit more offset, slightly longer blade length, it looks like certainly more top line. So if you're dialing into a look, yes, you're blending them subject to what you want. Like the five iron here in the chunky makes so much more sense than the blade in my head. And for lots of people, I think it would. Again, where you take this down to a wedge, I used to game the wedge in the forge, where now I actually game the seven, just for blending purposes. So the seven is that little bit closer to my four, so it blends easier than the big jump when I get down near my wedges. Um, but if you were, say, finishing out at a five, ZX5 here, the game improvement player's iron, you might then go seven in the middle and wedges and stuff, nine irons maybe down with a Mark II. And that blend would totally work on a visual idea. You know, and the blade, like I caught that slightly clean, it's gonna make me feel like I have to work really, really hard. We're five iron in the ZX7 Mark II, I think, you know, looks wise, this is as good as anything. And again, other manufacturers, it'll be a similar kind of blade idea. And then I don't feel like I have to work quite as hard. I do feel like anything slightly bottom groove, there's gonna be a little bit more there to help me. I tend to hit the ball a little bit bottom groovy. So again, I work that pattern into the clubs I buy. I don't hit a nine iron particularly bottom groovy that much, but a five iron, which I don't gain, but six, uh, seven-ish, yeah, a little bit down near the bottom groove when I miss hit it. So I'm kind of packing more down there. I'll show you the numbers from some data I collected with a seven iron from these, uh, shortly to show you what exactly is the physical happening uh, with actual ball and club data. But for me, when you jump up to the five here, it feels a little firmer. So think about that. If you've got a specific way you like your irons to feel or that you're used to, this now might not be dialing into what you want. I like the sound of this because obviously I game the fours which sound varied a different end to the blades. 
but the seven and the five blending, so rather than going from the blade up to the cavity back, when you blend in the middle of these manufacturer's irons, it's really subtle. And you're gonna see that in the numbers, the subtle looks, the subtle feel, and the subtle change in data it might be, you know, if you're a more skilled player, you're gonna have subtle differences. Where when I jump up to the ZX4, so now we're in the game improvement world, it's not so subtle. It's now gonna be, heard, felt, like I can hear it. It's subtle enough in the top line. That's what I like about the restrictions is they are very subtle. Some other manufacturers you might get to their game improvement one and it's super chunky and it just, it's got no intention of blending with other sets and that's fine, they're sets in themselves. But most of the manufacturers from TaylorMade Iron Group through to Titleist Iron Group and others, they are blending even their top end kind of within a family down to the bottom end and the four does, it's just nowhere near as subtle. It's, it's a bigger sound, it's a bigger look. It's kind of shouting, I'm friendly at me. And we're gonna show you the data now on what the difference is and you'll be amazed how close they all get. And they need to get close if you're gonna have a chance of blending them. Remember, they gotta be kind of like five to 12 yards difference from loft to loft. Um, so we do need them close, you want them close. But the other thing we can't, which you won't see in the numbers, but I just want to put out there, I think the mental difference, regardless of put whatever value you want on that, you know, the data is the data, but the fact that I'm looking down at a club that I want to hit compared to the blade, well, it's a club I want to hit, but I know it's just no point me making golf harder for myself, which I would have a few bad shots with that and get frustrated with it. That to me has value, which is why I actually blend very small amounts and go predominantly in the friendliest irons I can until I get down to a wedge where I blend and then I don't have anything more than the six iron, I go to a hybrid, serious blend. Uh, blend. Um, let's show you the data to show you how close or not all these four were. How close the three were, because I'm gonna show you the ZX blend more, because I don't think many of you are gonna be going from blade up to anywhere near this. So if we look at the data from a very standard indoor safe lie, what you're gonna see is you do see the stepping up in the blending. You see a stepping up in the ball speed between each of the models. We haven't got the blade in this one, but the blade, it would be sitting very similar to that ZX7. We also see a step up in launch angles slightly, and then we see it just dropping down from the more strongly lofted in the ZX4, which is the one I game. But what we do see is the peak height all peaking out very, very similar. So we're gonna get similar descent angles, similar peak heights, even though we're getting slightly different launches from those different lofted irons. We also see the spin rates just falling into place, which helps push the distance on. So again, in situations where you might be needing more help as loft falls off the club, this is again where those blended sets can really start to fall into place and work for you at the right ends of the bag. So does it cost more for blended sets? Well, it depends how you're buying your clubs. You could argue it does cost more because you have to have them custom fit. You're gonna have to order one of these, two of them, three of those. And that might cost more than some deal where someone's got a set of clubs in their pro shop and they're trying to get rid of them for new models coming out and whatever reasons, and you get a great deal on them. But that shouldn't be the way you're buying your irons. I think if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking of what's how to get the best irons for your game. So it shouldn't cost more than the clubs you're buying, as in you shouldn't be penalized for buying one of these two of them or whatever order you go in. And for most people, you won't. There'll be a per iron price and you'll pay that per iron price. So you could argue it will cost more because it's more of a specialized thing, but it shouldn't cost more subject to the fact that you're doing it if that kind of makes sense. So the big question is who should blend? Before we show you the numbers at the end of the fun situations of where I really start seeing blending in my mental game and in turn then my physical game a bit more really playing through. Everyone should blend. It's only convenience deals that are gonna stop you blending. The best players in the world blend their irons. I see more and more golfers talking about blending irons, even to them blending hybrids in through their set, which you, I do in my set. I definitely think everyone should be doing it. And really in the long run, I think we'll get here in the end and I know it's difficult and lots of people get frustrated when I say this and you should be frustrated. Tell your golf pros and they will tell the manufacturers to provide better services for you. You should be getting each iron fit individually. If you wanna get a proper club fit, you should be getting each iron, each club in your bag should have its own individual fit. 
you shouldn't just be kind of just spreading the same logic across every shot when you can play these clubs so differently subject to how you play them again in situation and also how you deliver the club for when you're presented with different lofts. So I think everyone should do this. I think, can everybody do this? No, and it is frustrating and the manufacturers need to try better and making sure you've got four irons, five irons, nine irons, wedges that you can test in your fittings to make sure you are able to blend each iron for you. All right, let's have some situation-based fun. 196 out, St Andrews 17th over the road hole bunker. Don't worry, we'll move the distance around because we know they don't go all the same distance, but it'll let, let you see how when I have to hit this one hard or the other one soft and vice versa, you know, gaming shots I'll play on the course, which ones really shine through as something I'd want to play. Right, 196, I've just moved my target slightly right. I'm um, still coming over the bunker. This is the bladed club, so this is kind of wheelhouse for this club, I think. Just slightly pulled it, but yeah, I've struck it well and the distance is spot on, like you'd take that all day long. Stopping relatively well, decent shot. Literally 196 carry, like on the number for that one. So in my blended set, if I go the five iron in the ZX4, a few points to think about here. So I stop at a six iron because it's probably the equivalent to that five iron. Probably my seven iron is <laughs> equivalent to that five iron almost. Um, so these aren't the same club. So I've now got lots of club, but remember this is a tough shot, hard to stop it. So I don't mind having some options with the way I play golf. Kind of smaller little shapey shots. It's something I grew up doing. Sit down. For me, with my style, the reason this is easy to blend, and obviously I would still match the lofts, and I think that's a really important point to remember. So in my blended set, I actually have two pitching wedges because the pitching wedge set is so strong in the ZX4 that I then put a ZX7 pitching wedge in, which is a truer loft, to then blend with my 50 and then my 58. And that's the point at either end. You do need to be careful when you're blending, which is why it's important each club is fit individually that you do get the balance right subject to the speed you put in. But for lots of people, they're losing speed or they're losing launch as they go into lower lofts. And that's again, where you start going to the more friendly clubs, you might find that you can push them on. Like this five iron pushes way on than the bladed one. I barely hit that. So you can see what I've done. I've taken the speed off with the stronger club. I've launched it higher. Uh, it peak height the same and it carried slightly short distance off to the right safer shot but you know they're relatively decent shots both of those you know i'm going to take both of these this is obviously the better shot right in the wheelhouse on that hole every day so we're now at 213 yards um and for the game improvement four coming over that bunker This feels like a decent club to hit. I mean, it's actually too much. I'm not used to this. This is so powerful. It's slightly too much, but I'm over the trouble. But I felt like I've hit that just nice, not crazy hard. That's 213 out. Now with the blade, I would have to go to a four iron. Four iron's gonna be crazy more petrifying mentally than this five iron in a blade. So you see what I mean? Blending all day long now makes so much sense because this one having to be hit hard with the less help, oh, I've had a good go at it. It's a better straighter shot. Get up, get up, bounce, go. Oh yes, I should be using blades. I'm a legend. <laughs> I'm gonna go full set of blades. This video is rubbish. But you see what I mean? I don't feel like I'm gonna repeat that in any way over and over again. Oh yeah, I feel like I could hit plenty of loose, short, right-ish shots like that with this club. So again, you know, I still have to perform, but why would I use this five iron when I feel like it's easier with the ZX4, the game improvement, blending all day long for me there. So if we put that in the hand of the ZX7 or the ZX5, I reckon it's the five, I'm gonna go ZX5. See what I mean? You could go ZX5, 5 iron, ZX4, 5 iron, which is more like a 4 iron, or go 4 iron and push it on. See, I think wheelhouse stuff now with ZX5. 
Like, that's a clean fin. I didn't hit that great. Yeah, and it's doing not as bad. I mean, that's pretty much landing where the blade landed, hit well. So you can see how I could go from blades down into the really short ones, into the long ones, the longest I'm gonna go as helpful as possible. And then in that middle bracket, it's not gonna make much difference in my mind between five and seven. Finding the yardage, I'm finding the launch, I'm finding the ability to stop the ball within my set of clubs to make sure I've got hopefully the best tools on the hardest holes to try and produce the best shots. Stop! So let's not forget the biggest needle mover for anyone in golf is you, the person. Improving your abilities, how you swing the club, how you deliver, that's where the big gains are. But if you feel like you're flatlining in your golf, you work quite hard and you want to squeeze those little benefits out, definitely fitting each iron individually is a way better way than just buying sets of iron. So I do think we've got it wrong and I think don't think you've got the best irons for your set. Some of you might do. Let me know in the comments what you use. Now, if you want to find out how to improve your ball striking with your irons, this video here is really helping a lot of golfers rip it ball then to earth.